Good morning, traders. This is Fred Rezac at CM Trading. Welcome to today's market review. Today is April 8th, 2014. Today is Tuesday. Uh, just jumping into the economic calendar for today, uh, some of the high impact news. Uh, J Japan, Bank of Japan rate decision and a monetary policy that was earlier this morning. Not such a big factor. It's in line with forecast, uh, so not such a big number. GDP nicer GDP estimate, uh, which is a high impact number later today. Uh, so it has been a relatively quiet, um, news driven, economic driven uh, market for the past couple of days. So it has been a little bit lighter. Although there have been some oodles of opportunities, uh, just jumping into the Aussie USD. Uh, if we look at a daily, let's start with a longer time frame. Uh, what we see here is some continued strength at these levels at 0 0.93020 right here, okay, which is really relatively a previous support, okay, previous resistance. So this, this is a really colossal place to be, either on the upside or the downside. Uh, it's really important to keep an eye on where this is going to go next. Um, I would you know, buy maybe a little bit small, uh, maybe hedge it at this level just to see how your longs and how your shorts are going to go, um, just to anticipate the next move either up or down. Okay, but it's definitely uh, showing some continued strength as we see here in a shorter time frame, uh, and it's challenging this upper level. Okay, uh, it hasn't really given me a candle that shows that it's going to retrace negatively, so I'm more inclined to say that it's going to go up. Okay, but it's uh, it's definitely something you need to keep on the radar. The Aussie USD has gone up like 300 pips in the past month. So that's really important to keep on your plate. Uh, the GBP USD also rallying nicely. Uh, just this big number over here. Um, and then challenging this upper level, uh, which is previous support, previous support, as we see here again. And it's beautiful when you see graphs like this because this is really readable. Okay, this is a support line uh, and now an anticipated resistance line. So if we break above the 166, 250 area, I would say we could challenge this 166 and a half, 166.75 ultimately. Uh, and on the downside, if we do fall apart, well, we have a little bit of uh, support on 166 and 166. 165, excuse me, 775. So there's these levels here that you can also trade uh, as these things are all happening at the same time uh, with the Aussie USD challenging its uh, resistance levels and also the GBP USD. So keep in mind to keep this on the radar. If we look in a shorter time frame, we see this nice rally uh, from yesterday and it's continued strength, okay? So if you're able to buy the dips, able to buy the pullbacks, you'll be doing yourself a much bigger favor. Um, jumping into the USD Japanese Yen, um, holding at 122 and that's steady. Uh, it's challenged the upper 102 levels and now it's retracing to the 102 mid-level. Um, there are multiple supports for it, um, but as you can see, it really retraced nicely from 103.80, I would say, 104 to almost 102. So that's a major, major move, almost 150 pips of a retracement from last week. Um, but at these levels, we could expect maybe some, some, some sort of consolidation, some sort of sideward trading until we could really challenge this upper range again. Uh, as you remember, this upper range was challenged on multiple occasions uh, on, different, on different venues of it. Um, it was challenged over here by the 105 level back in January uh, and then, you know, traded in this range, not such a tight range, but it was trading in this range, which actually was a good, was a beautiful range to be trading. Um, so definitely keep it on the radar, maybe as it approaches this 102.50 level, 102.60 level, start buying it because it has some previous support and previous resistance as we see here. So it's anticipated future support. So 
you know, to bite at these levels, I just want to draw a pen here so you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, as we see, support, and then broke the support, became resistance, challenged that resistance again. So I would say anywhere between this area uh, would be a good buy for maybe, you know, seeing somewhere in this next range for it to be trading until it could find some either direction higher or lower. Um, moving right along into the gold. Uh, gold has been trading uh, nicely since its, you know, demise from 1390 uh, earlier in the in the uh, in the year, earlier from last month. Excuse me. Let's just uh, go into a readable chart. Um, let's just uh, jump right in here. Okay, if you guys remember, it rallied all the way to 1386 and we retraced to 1280, and then did these little, you know, bull flag second bull flag and now jumping to 108, 1308 at these levels. Uh, it could challenge us 1309, okay, 1309 before it retraces down. If it can find itself above 1309, it has multiple stop areas, 1316, 1330, you know, etc. Um, as the and this is really, if you think about it, it's the converse relationship between the gold and the Dow. Uh, if you remember, I was speaking about the Dow, how it was challenging its upper level and then broke apart after the non-farm payroll numbers last Friday. Um, and this is a direct correlation to it. You see, when gold goes up, the markets go down. Um, so I would wait for a retracement before buying it again, uh, also keeping a sharp eye on the Dow to see if it's going to continue breaking apart. Here's a picture of the Dow in just an hour frame. As we said earlier, it challenged this upper area up here. This is this. Uh, challenged this upper area up here. Didn't break higher. Came out with some, you know, expected news, let's say. I guess the market was expecting much better news from the non-farm payroll in order to take it harder, to, in order to justify taking it higher to 16,600 and above. Uh, and then it broke down to 16,240, 245. Um, so this would actually be a good area maybe to buy a little bit uh, in this area. During these months, it actually gets a little bit crazier before the summer months uh, because, you know, as you may know, many of the uh, investors take, you know, they sell in May and they go away. They go away for the summers. They have summer holidays. Uh, so keep an eye out for maybe another rally. Uh, challenging the 16,450 levels um, and you know just keep an eye out between the gold and the Dow to see how they're trading against each other. This is Fred Razek at CM Trading. I want to wish you guys a great trading day. Thank you. Bye.